Hello everyone and I hope you all are doing well. Welcome to another fantasy match preview. This is for the game between the Heat and the Renegades. It was after a long time that we played a game and we were able to take full advantage of the fact that we could go with just two batters and Colin Dignan home in the form of the third all-rounder totally saved the day against the other apps where you could not take source of that privilege. So enjoy you download the fan to play app right away. And apart from that, we have lots in store for you today. Venue conditions, the team, your GL options. And we have Nikhil Bhai with us today to give you his golden picks too. First, the golden picks are found uh, But what's the important thing is to see, just as the team may change, the players are behind. We'll see roles being changed. Important role today that changed was of Daniel Sands. You saw him not bowling in the power search. Nathan McEndrew bowled. And he picked up a few wickets, which tells you how you will, you will have to also start tinkering once these changes are coming about. So, uh, and BBL is BBL. Peter Siddle doesn't take wickets, but Colin De Grandom does. So, be very careful of your investment. And yes, we'll also start to tell you uh, which is the better game to try for which kind of league and uh, what is the risk that you have to take in that game. So, do let us know your feedback on that as well. Yes, more on that uh, in the uh, coming time. Yes, so first up, before we get to that part, let's look at what the venue conditions for this game are. So this game is going to be played at Geelong. And for all of you that remember, this was the first venue of where the T20 World Cup happened. And the unique ground dimensions are something that will catch your eye first up. The square boundaries are very short. But those are the sort of square boundaries that did not deter someone like Vanindu Asranga to cash in full on. And that is not only because of the fact that the batsmen were tempted to keep taking on that short boundary, but also the pitch looking to assist spin, especially as we moved into the second inning. So, Nikhil, why do you see more of that happening on this pitch come this specific game here? Yes, and you see the importance of knowing conditions better. Now, because the World Cup happened here, a lot of us have a lot a lot more idea about these venues, which is why you can uh, frame your uh, base teams accordingly. So I think that should remain the same. I think from what I remember vividly, it was still a better wicket to bat on first, but there was mm. movement up, movement early. And also the games, the first games often started very early. So you need to be very sure of that. And then I think uh, like it is with like it was with Adelaide, it's a better venue to bat first. You get a good score, then you can defend. You can also use the short boundaries to your advantage because people try and go there. But if you, if you can get them to miss it with better bowling attack, which I think one of these two teams that are playing has, I think they should uh, come through better in that in that regards. Yes, a lot of interesting things for you to watch out for, especially with this specific ground. So let's look at what base team will be the best for you in this specific game. So, we get the base team for this one. Nikhil, I want to hear your thoughts in terms of the type of league that you'll adopt in this game and what are uh, the risk factor that you feel will be applicable. Yes, so as you can see on the screen as well, we're, we're trying something new here, uh, trying to help you with whichever leagues which we feel that this is the game that is perfect for this kind of leagues. I think the entire tournament of BBL is very good for mini GLs and GLs only. Because you have to take those risks because people are using their resources differently. You saw that in the hmm. previous game. Uh, today, Colin de Grandom bowled a lot. Matthew shot, Matt shot bowled a lot. Aves Sagar did not bowl. Thought three despite taking the wickets. So that makes it difficult for you to just rely on the key key players and say that okay, they will do the job. But if captain is going to try something else hmm. in SL, most of the teams are going to come with very common as we discussed. You know, Daniel Sands. And Matt Shaw, somebody would have come with uh, Rashid as well. But if you are somebody who took a risk on Alex Hales or on CDG, then you get much better reward in mini jails because if you top, you get more than 8x kind of your return. So uh, now this is something hmm. that works for us. It may not work for you and you it may work differently for you. So you can approach it differently. We feel that because most of these games always have, most teams have the 6th and the 7th bowler, that is going to cause you problems. So we feel the best type of investments are you mix them up, but preferably prefer mini GLs and Grand League mode. 
Yes, so that is the order for the day. And while it's mini GLs and GLs, uh, we feel like the risk factor for this game would be medium scale. Not because we feel like you cannot take too many risks, but because of the fact that when you look at the player pools of both these teams, the amount of differentials that you have apart from the 11 that we've picked are very limited. So yeah. we're trying to build a risk scale where it would generally be medium when you have only two, three other options, while it would be higher yeah. when you have four, five or options above that. So that is the thought process behind the risk scale. And you can give back on and uh, looking at the team we have set up we have gone with one keeper and sam billings and two batters colin munro and aaron finch so we have not taken too much of risk here because all of it is down in the next two sections and and also see here we have to factor in what are the what are the other options that you have and what is the form of those guys now melbourne for years have tried hundreds of other people and i'm not exaggerating they've tried everybody who can bat up top but it is sometimes come off, sometimes look very shabby and very uh, unorthodox. So it may come off for them again. You could have Harper coming. They'll have that one good day. Fraser hmm. McGuff will have one good day. Harper will have one good day. But are you going to be able to predict? Now, very important thing here, Ross slightly bold in, in the previous game. I don't know how many games he's bold as much. So that is why the risk factor, as we said, is medium because you're not really sure how the teams go. There is one option that we have in Wells here which may be a Grand League option, which we might hear ahead. But uh, I think from these two, you don't have any other rule who's going to stand out and scream that with me. Pearson is another option for you to try out in the batting section, but again, very inconsistent at times. Yes, so we've gone with the guys who are pretty much yeah. reliable, not in totality, but in terms of the options that you have against them, I think yeah. these are the most reliable choices. Then when you look at the all-rounders, we have gone with Andre Russell as captain. He's the perfect package that you want for T20s, irrespective of the consistency. But the fact that you will find him hit a few big hits and give you a wicket here and there, that's enough for you at least to stay in the game. Nick Maddinson and James Basley. Basley will sort of be a differential, especially if you're playing on three batter apps. But we don't feel like that is the order for this specific game. And hence, we've opted with just two. While in the bowling, we have loaded some quality spinners in Akil and Mujib and we've gone with Rogers who can bowl at the start at the death Kane Richardson who is a death specialist and Mark Stikiti again who is very very impressive in both phases so we feel like the bowlers will be the order of the day especially with these two teams because they are batting they are the sort of guys who will come out and hit 200 on one day and mm -hmm. can also get 95 all out on another and again see this is also why we picked the team as mini GLT. Because you see the team here is made assuming one team is going to dominate the other. And which is why we've stuck it at mini GL or GL. Now, it was a, if it was a more balanced uh, you know, combination where you could see people from both teams and we had more options for you to give, then it might be a game where we might call it a good game for small league. So, again, this is very subjective. Everybody works differently here. But uh, apart coming back to the picks, I think there aren't much much of a difference here there are a couple of options and from here we'll have four or five options but eventually it's on you i don't think you can draw akil kane richardson and thomas rogers because he's bowling in the end mujib rahman bowled in the end overs last game so that is a very crucial insight for you to have that okay if russell is not going to bowl do you want to take a risk on him so that is why it's mini yet so you can go with your visualization but we feel this is still the base team that you can try and work around with Yes, absolutely. So that wraps up the base section for us. And now let's look at who your best Grand League picks for this game are. So Grand League options for this game. And at the start of the preview, I spoke about an all popular leg spinner. And as I did that, I'm going to back a leg spinner for my Grand League options for this game. That is Mitch Swepson. I feel like you will need something special from a heat bowler to be able to get through the Renegades. Because you, when you see that heat bowling lineup, the quality, apart from Stikiti and Basley, is very, very limited in terms of the options that they have. And Swepson, like we know, has had some international exposure. So if there's someone who will be able to break through it, I feel like it can be him, especially if he's bowling second. 
and uh, the other pick as already mentioned by nikhil bhai is john wells for me especially with the kind of finishing order that he showed in the last year i think he's pretty much due for one this year yeah pretty much that's one of my key picks gone there but uh, no problem we keep trying uh, my two picks for Gra- for grand leagues one will definitely be zavier butler uh, he's a very good power play bowler i feel uh, if he gets the right conditions and if he's bowling first very tempted to try him out uh, and in that option you should definitely try wells because then you are going to expect wells to do a bit of scoring as well and remember wells is coming off a century in the warm up game so again there is form he may not have gotten enough to bat but i think that is an option for you to try out and now coming to renegades now this is where it, it is slight tricky because if we picked seven almost best players from the renegades team that are there already in the side and uh, finch would have been a very ideal candidate for me to give you uh, that as an option but i feel i'm going to go very left field and mujibarama uh, again depending on his use if he's used well uh, i feel he can do the damage for you but again the confidence in that is not too much because these two teams are one of the most irritating teams for me in the in the bbl so yeah good luck and let's see what happens yes absolutely and because we have seen the ghar wale bahar wale trend in this year mujibur rahman is going to play against ex ghar wale mm-hmm. so keep that in mind and maybe make him grand league captain in one or two teams and on that note we'll wrap up this preview you also tell us how many wickets you think mujibur rahman will take in the comments remember to hit the like button before you leave thank you so much for tuning in and have a great game have a good game guys take care see you soon